I want to grab this opportunity and interview you and put me in a dicey situation. <laughs> I <don't know. laughs> Uh, you have so much experience, I don't think so you'll be into dicey situation. But I think so. Um, there are certain questions which I have in mind which I need to ask ask you. And I'm sure uh, you would oblige me. I will try my best. But I must tell you before that, that by now, Amrita is a seasoned interview giver. And I'm very certain that this is my first mature attempt at actually giving an interview. So I hope you'll be kind on me. It's similar here. So it's first time I'm asking questions. So I need to really think hard. So my first question, question is, I've always seen you uh, near politicians. You've known politicians very closely. You've known uh, glamour personalities, celebrities very closely. And here you have come up with this beautiful book, Beyond Dreams. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Better Than the Dreams. Better Than the Dreams, A People's Story. Mm -hmm. What inspired you to take up this topic, which is pertaining to a faceless, drab, infra, without emotions? Definitely with your stories, with your vision, you have converted into an emo emotional uh, story with a face, with a lot of interest which is developed by the reader. But what is it which, which made you choose this topic of infra instead of any politician? As a solo author, you could have chosen a politician of your choice or a celebrity or something very light. So you've really chosen cement, concrete and steel. Tell me the idea behind that. Uh, very honestly, I have been covering the metro, as you know, for very long, and uh, we are all aware of the major role played by uh, Sri Devendra Padnavis when he was the chief minister, and since then we have been tracking the progress. A large part of the work was already accomplished in his tenure, and uh, it was my first book, I can't really call it my first book because it's written by Nitin Gadkari and I have co-edited it. But when I went to give a copy of that book to Sri Dikshit, who's the managing director of Maha Metro, it was his suggestion that maybe we could explore a topic like that. And I thought that really the Metro has just barely taken off and not even complete. And will it really impact lives? I was not very convinced. But I just started speaking to a few people because he told me a few incidents. And when I spoke to a few people, I realized that yes, it has already touched lives. And there could be a vast gamut of stories we could really explore. One very interesting story which I am particularly fond of is that of uh, uh, the Singhru family. They are uh, both here and they live. Uh, they used to live in Sita Bharti. And, uh, it's a very small thing. Uh, Advocate Singhru's dream for Nagpur was that the students should not really need to leave the city and go out for jobs. They should be able to study well in this city. And uh, his own son had to leave the city and go. So when he went to stay with his son and started reading the newspapers, it was the metro which excited him because he thought that it was the metro which will change his city. And when he came and the joyride phase was going on, uh, he was here for a Ganesh festival and he boarded the train, he took a joyride and within uh, a couple of days he passed away. So it was like his last wish, the wish for the city and its development which materialized. So I realized that these kind of stories are happening. Metro is only one very small part. but lives do weave around it in this way and that is when I thought I could work on this book. Lovely. So you understood human emotions and how they were weaved with the city and the development of the city. Yes. That's lovely. You know uh, this metro would be reducing uh, the time on roads by 50 percent. Yes. It would be um, uh, reducing the energy requirements to one fifth. Yes. And That's very big. You are out very big. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you have a forestation commitment from the metro. You have uh, uh, this contract signed 
very strict contract which is signed by the metro for environment protection and there are so many things that metro is bringing along with it along with employment also but there is a, 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 a group of people which is always lobbying against which has always been lobbying against metro in spite of this kind of lobbying and irrespective of political thought in it you went ahead and wrote on the metro which made all us all of us proud but there have been critics who have trolled you who have criticized you what do you what would you say to these critics what is your punch to them you know honestly more than a punch i would say i have nothing to say back to them for a simple reason that i have not accepted what they have said so i have nothing to give back lovely lovely very good that's how uh, you remain positive in your life it's important you forget about the things which don't matter right and uh, in fact i browsed through the uh, book and i've seen you've given a lot of space here in this book to shri nitin karkari ji shri devendra padnavis ji their vision their commitment to this project which made it happen so soon it is the fastest a project which has completed here in nagpur yes yes and uh, i should not just say fastest in nagpur this is the fastest metro of the world of the world so yes. i think that's a huge thing for us it's the fastest completing infrastructure project in our city in india and the world so uh, since you've given so much space to niti ji to devin ji a little little space you gave to iknath ji also but more to the these two um uh i i must ask you this question who is your personal favorite devendra ji <laughs> or nitin gadkari ji <laughs> now now you know uh, why i said uh, she's this is really a very tricky question and uh, corner yes and i'm really cornered and uh, i i will try to figure out the answer to this Uh, as a journalist i'm very proud of both of them and their work for nagpur and uh, i appreciate the fact that nagpur got this opportunity that devendra ji was the cm and at the same time we had someone at the center so together they could push this work but uh, you know while i'm figuring out the reply to this very tricky question i will ask you oh. who is your favorite now the journalist is suddenly come alive yes the journalist <laughs> yes okay mera to answer it is very easy sarita it's not difficult for me ha dekhiye sabhi ke ghar ki murghi dal barabar hoti hai correct so uh, that's why my favorite is nitin gadkari ji <laughs> yeah lovely now I'm, you can see it now you yeah, yeah. but oh uh, now i can't escape it let me tell you i have it's very difficult to say but i think the only uh, analogy for this would be if you ask a parent you know which child they love <laughs> most i'm sure no one will be able to reply no, right no, you are you are not that old you're not that old you're not that old so 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 very honestly anyone who works for this uh, city and as a journalist i get to see all of them very close up so i have my assessment and very honestly i respect both of them equally Oh, thanks. So, this is a proper political reply. I can see her future in politics also now. Diplomatic. मेरे दो अनमोल रतन. Diplomatic answer. Yeah, very diplomatic. Okay, going to the next question. So you are, you are an editor, Vidarbha head of ABP News. Can we see? And you have been working on the ground in spite of being in a bigger position. Can we see you? as a fire brand bear it all bear it all kind of an anchor uh in one of the shows which bears it all in the coming days and like we all dreamt of uh, the metro and it happened do you dream of some time later that you would be uh, an in md show hmm? md of a powerhouse media house that's a little later and now do you uh, intend to anchor a show which will be like tolford uh i do have this kind of a small brand i should say which is called coffee with kaushik 
but that is something we kind of uh, bring out only during election period. <laughs> so uh, I suppose an election period is always not not just firebrand. Forget firebrand; it's always fireworks. So uh, maybe I, I saw election. I heard fireworks happened yesterday also with Mr. Naughty. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, we did. Uh, do an interview, yes, and uh, uh, as you know, the Shiv Samparka Abhiyan has been going on, and uh, um, I know who you are referring to, as a journalist, I know that, and uh, uh, yes, it was quite interesting, especially given the developments which have been happening in Maharashtra, uh, and MD of a news channel I really don't know because the, the, the management part, the administration part, that is not me. Hmm. I am a plain and pure journalist and I don't think I know anything else. I'm not skilled for anything more. So, yeah, maybe upscaling Coffee with Kaushik beyond uh, elections, that's a great idea. Thank you for giving me that dream. Looking forward to this upscaling. Yeah. So finally, my last question. Give me three reasons you feel that the construction and execution of metro happened at such a lightning speed in our city that it made records. Three main reasons. I think the first and foremost reason is that Devendraji as the chief minister chose the correct person to head the metro. In Mr. Brajesh Dixit, I think he found someone who knew this agenda that he had to uh, kind of bring the metro on a war footing to Nagpur. So, you know, making the right choice is very important. As I was told in the story, because I have been interviewing people and I have been interviewing the, uh, uh, Devendraji and Nidhinji also as part of the process. So, Nidhinji also mentioned that. Uh, Mr. Dixit's name was suggested by Devendraji and he convinced Nitinji and Nitinji says that in hindsight I am very happy that he convinced me to accept uh, uh, Mr. Brajesh Dixit's name. So I think that is reason number one. Reason number two I would say is what I said that, uh, that advantage in Nagpur where you have the same people at the center and you have the same people in the state and pushing projects or making everything move is also uh, easier, especially if the will is common. Otherwise, being in the same party also is really not the answer because people can also pull at, in two different directions. But fortunately, with Nagpur Metro, that did not happen. And I think that is the second reason. And the third reason is, I think the people of Nagpur, were extremely cooperative. And uh, even when I say that this is the third reason, I will not say this is the last or the least important. This is a very important reason. People had to bear with all the ghaddas, the, uh, you know, the digging up, uh, there were uh, shutdowns, especially commercial places were shut down for so long. But people cooperated. People wanted a developmental project to happen. And there were areas like when the flyover was brought down, there were houses which had to be shut for days. The people had to move with passes. You see, you have to appreciate the common Nagpurian for working as a team with this infrastructure project and making it happen. So I think these are the three uh, main reasons that I can think of. Lovely. It was an honor to interview you. And um, hope to uh, see Nagpur bringing in more laurels by way of infra, by way of its representatives across India and across the world. And I must also congratulate you for the manner in which you conducted this interview. She is certainly not an amateur and I'm glad she doesn't want to leave banking and singing, otherwise it could get difficult in the profession with competition. I learned from you. Thank you. Subscribe to Nation Next YouTube channel. And press the bell icon to get regular updates from Nation Next. Also like Nation Next Facebook page and follow us on Instagram and Twitter.